What's up, everybody out there in the YouTube world? Dicky Does Audio here. Hey, I got a video for you guys here that I, I've been wanting to do this for a while because I, I own both of these subwoofers and I've built several of the uh, the Dayton Ultimax 15-inch subs. Um, right there, I built those three and then this one right here. And uh, so I just grabbed one of them and I, I wanted to compare the the Dayton, the Ultimax 15, and I wanted to compare it with the Klipsch R115 just to try to give a little bit of insight, I guess, on uh, if there's really any difference between the output. Um, and so the way I'm going to do that is the way that I've seen it done, which was using REW over there on my computer. And uh, so what I'll do is I have my microphone set up three feet away from the box or three feet away from the center of the, the actual cone. And the microphone is level with the, uh, the dead center of the cone. And so what I'm going to do is go over here. And I've already started because I don't want to make this video too long. And so I will go up one decibel increments on my AVR. I'm using the, uh, the Denon 6400 AVR for this. And the amp that I'm using to provide power to this subwoofer is the Behringer iNuke 6000. It's the uh, NX6000, um, the four-channel amp. And uh, so here we are. This was at negative 10 dB on the receiver. And so, like I said, I, I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to just continue to go up until we see compression and basically until the graph changes a little bit. And when the graph changes a little bit, we know that's how much output we have um, that this subwoofer will put out, at least in, in my room. You know, that you could probably get a little more room gain in your room. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm just, you know, giving you what my room will do. So I already set the AVR up. It's at 9 dB now. It's the same to me here too. Like nothing's changed at all. So we'll go up another one. And now we are at negative 6 dB on the AVR receiver, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, it still looks the same to me. Let's go over here and go up a little bit. And everything still looks the same. Uh, maybe a tiny, I don't know. Let me see if I can separate these a little bit. If I can separate the graphs a little better. There we go. Yeah, everything still looks the same. So let's go ahead and go up one more. And we still look good. So let's keep going. And negative three. And still look good. I got a feeling we might start topping out here sometime soon. But man, for this one sub, man, it's it's putting in some work right now and this unfortunate i did not realize that i had a bottle of gorilla glue that was opened and spilled over and dried right on the top of it so now i have to sand all this down and, and paint it which it needed to be painted again really anyway just to get a, another good coat on it but dang that sucks and like i said the, the sub is tuned to 19 maybe 18 i forget exactly what it was and uh, the only way that i that i could figure out how to get rew to actually give you the the uh the decibels was to let it start off at zero i wanted to start off at 15 hertz and whenever i did that it took away the the decibels so i couldn't um, do it like that so i'm hoping i don't tear my sub up um, I, I think i'll be okay but okay so we're actually still good there too i mean putting in some work uh-oh, we got clipping. So, yep, that's where we stop. All right, hit OK to continue. 
and I will hit OK, but that's it. So that's where we are with this. So this Altimax 150, or not 115, the Altimax uh, UM15 right here is our final. We're going to go back here to this one and keep this one and the, this one right here. So we'll keep the last two that we just did, get rid of all the other ones. And, uh, and then I'll pause this and I'll go slide the, the uh, Klipsch 15 inch subwoofer over here. And hopefully this turns out good for you guys so you guys can see these, these Altimax 15s, man, they ain't no joke. But that Klipsch ain't no joke either. So I'm kind of curious to see what, where this is going to end up myself, you know, to see which one is going to do better. And then I'll have my final, like my, just a little bit of what I think between the two, the differences are other than if there's any output or anything. So, but anyway, we see right here, um, peak 118.1. And so now let me pause this and we'll go over okay, so we're back. slide to 15. And I got the Klipsch R115 slid over into the same exact spot where the Ultimax 15 was at. I went ahead and marked it all with tape, and the microphone has to be a little closer to the clips. The The cone actually seems like it sits back about another inch or two uh, deeper than the Altimax does. But anyway, subwoofers in the same spot, just basically moved one and swapped it out for the other and put the other one in there. And I went ahead and started over here. Just like I did on the Altimax, I started off at negative 10 just to get one reading on there. So now we're going to go up to negative nine on the AVR, which I just did. And so now that we're at negative nine, let's see where the clips comes out. Okay, so you know what? We're going to go ahead and go up two. So now we're at now we're at negative, negative two seven. from from negative four to negative two. And that's at a hundred and eight dB right there, and if you remember, the Altimax topped out at one eighteen in here, so we still got ten dB to to go. Okay, so let's see, 110, so that's not too bad. Okay, uh, we are at negative one on the AVR. Right, I'm gonna take one or two of these off. So we can see a little better. Okay, so now let's see, we are at negative, or positive two on the AVR now. Let's see what this thing can do. One twelve. Um, so we're going to mark that. Up. It's actually peaking at one twelve five, and yeah, and no, oh, hold on a minute. Yeah, let me see. Okay, we'll go up one more to positive three, and see what happens. Hoping I'll blow my subwoofer. <laughs> Okay, we got a 112 is the last one. This is at positive five on the AVR. And I still don't really. See, it, it's still going. Four. So now whenever I do this, and I'm going to start this one off right around 20 hertz. Um, and we'll keep going up from there. Start off at 18. And so let me turn the AVR up. And we are actually at positive six on the AVR now. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, this thing's still got some more. 
Let's go up one more, see what happens. We are at positive seven on the AVR. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this clip's 15 inch subwoofer ain't no joke. It might not have that, that I don't know what you wanna call it, that JTR thump or something like that, but that damn thing will get down, man. And I mean, I don't see anything right here to where this is showing any indication of compression between these two right here. So, I am going to call it quits though on that. So, if you're interested in stuff like this, hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave me some comments, let me know if I did something right, wrong in this video. Um, just give me a little feedback. Let me know what you guys want to see. I still have quite a few things that I want to go over um, with speaker wise speakers that I'll be buying and uh, speakers I'll be talking about. So like I said, uh, if you can hit the subscribe button and drop me a comment or two just right, so, so I can quick rundown. See what I'm of doing these wrong. two subwoofers going at it. The clips R115 came in at 113.5 decibels output. The Dayton Ultimax UM15 came at a came in at 118.1, which is a difference of 4.6 decibels. That's definitely a noticeable amount of uh, output, you know. And between the two, the Ultimax is definitely noticeable. But I guess something that you have to ask yourself is: Do you have the the room for one of these bigger? boxes that you know that these Ultimax require or if you're going to go sealed you know if, if you go sealed I don't know what the output is on one of those uh, if a sealed Ultimax gave you the same amount of output as the uh, the clips did then that would definitely be the way to go because you could obviously um, let, let's just say this all four of these Ultimax 15s right here that I built they cost me 225 a piece um, so we're talking $900 for the four just say a thousand dollars after tax for the four subwoofers themselves and then around two to three hundred dollars for the MDF and everything the screws and whatnot that I needed to build them and so we're talking thirteen hundred and then plus another uh, plus an amp so you add another six hundred dollars for the amp and so for nineteen hundred or just right around two thousand dollars you have four subwoofers and so for four subwoofers that you build, you can maybe get two Ultimax, or not Ultimax, but two Clips subwoofers. So it's, it's just a matter of preference, I guess. Um, but like I said, there is a noticeable amount of output, or a noticeable amount more output that comes from the Ultimax. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and I'm going to end this video with that that the Dayton Ultimax 15 is definitely a bargain at $225 if you want to build the box if you can afford to buy manufactured then go to manufactured route and you know what no matter how you do it enjoy it it's all fun so until next time thanks